Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to see part two of action center use case that we've started in the previous video. So if you're watching my channel for the first time and don't know about the part one video, I'll leave out the link for that particular video in the description. And just of that part is to just you know, recap quickly from where we've left. So basically we are trying to see, we have created few actions in action center. Let me show you them. So these are few actions that are there, which are there for SOP approval. So here I wanted to bring out a practical topic uh, where few actions that are there in action center. And as soon as the action is taken on them, and uh, certain queue items has to run and certain mails has to be sent. So that's the whole idea, right? So in that case, what we will do, right? So now the human user has come back. So if you see the action has been created quite a long back, like three days ago. Now I'm going to take action on this. So I'm going to open this SOP. I'm going to go through and either I'll go approve or reject it, right? So if you see the same item is there in my queue. So 832177 uh, is there in my queue also. So once after I click on or take an action on that particular item, I can I can do, I can, you know, get the transaction item that's there in my queue and I can run the process. So that's how we have actually tried to, replicated right so now what i'm going to do here is so till which part we have finished it we have run through few files we have created few files for all the sops which has different sop of the candidates we've run through all the files and we created the task so as soon as we created the task we get the task object so we use the id as the reference and we created one queue okay as soon as we created the action task, we created a queue item. So till that part, it's finished. And now once after the manual user takes action on that particular task, we are going to process that queue item. So how we are going to do that? So let's see. Let's create a new workflow. Okay, so this says... Uh, action part okay we are processing it okay so now for this what we are going to do is first thing we are going to get the transaction item get the transaction item i'm giving you the whole solutioning here so from which particular queue we wanted to get the transaction sop approval queue right so let's name this as the transaction output which is action id okay so i'm taking that as action id so first thing is let's just imagine so this if you say is in the action center the action has been already created three days ago so in a case when i run this process and there's no action taken I still want my queue item to be there, correct? When I am picking up this particular item from the queue and if it sees that the particular item status is not completed or no action is taken on it, I still want the queue item. So based on that particular status, I am going to take on action. So in order to have this queue item still be there, I will create a new queue item with the same task ID because once after it picks the get transaction item, picks the queue item, the status will be changing from in progress to new status. Sorry, new to in progress status. So to in order to have the item still there, I am going to change the status to new back or I'm going to create a new item there. Okay, so when I'm going to do that, only if the status of that particular queue item in the action center. So how do I know if that particular item uh, status has changed or not in the action center? Let me tell you that particular activities get task details, get task data, okay? So I'm taking get task data. What is the task ID? So here I have to pass the task ID, right? So if you see here, 
what is the value that I'm getting from the action center? Action ID. So action ID dot, how do we get this? Specific content and here the value is task ID, copying this task ID. So basically this will be a two string, but the task ID, it needs an integer. Okay. So if you see, it needs an integer. So what we can do over here is we can convert this. Okay. It needs an integer. We can convert this into an integer. Okay. Save. Let's see there's some issue. Specific content as dictionary. Public overloads property. Okay. So basically, I think this is uh, some bug with the get transaction items output. This I have encountered some time back. Let me check it out. So I have cleared that issue out by I just tried to validate the whole project. And then when I ran it, it asked me to import some more uh, references, which caused me this error. So and then it got auto resolved after those references got downloaded. OK, so let's look into this. Uh, so I did the same thing uh, inside the get task data. I kept whatever the action ID and the specific content that we are getting from the queue, which is a task ID. I'm converting that into in integer because this needs an integer. And I'm creating the output object, which is task out object, which has the um, status, whether it's completed or not, right? So I'm doing that. So let's run and see what happens. Okay. So if you see here, we already got the transaction item and it says this is the particular task ID of that transaction item. 832173. So if you go to the queue here and if you see, just refresh this this status will be going to in progress because it has already been picked by the queue. Uh, sorry, it, it has already been picked by the robot, right? So as we already picked this, the status goes into in progress, correct? It will not be in the new status. But the problem is, the problem is in the get transaction data, okay? The task object is that we are trying to fetch. Task data fetched for A2, A32173. So now what I'm going to check is the status of that particular task. Task object. Okay. So here, if you see, there's a lot of data because the SOP information is there. There's a lot of information. Who is this, who, who is it assigned to? Creation, user ID, data. And then what exactly we need here is deleted user ID, folder path, status. If you see the status is unassigned, right? The status is unassigned. Try to let uh, pick this status, okay? Task object dot status. If you see the status of it is unassigned, correct? Let's copy this, right? So, how do we get the status of this particular item? Okay. So, by using this particular uh, specific token, by using this particular token, we will get the value of that particular status. So, now my challenge is, it's in, still in an unassigned status, but I have utilized my queue item, which has gone to in progress status. Correct. So ne when next time I run the bot, this particular queue item will be missed. So how do I update the status for this particular queue item? How do I send mail for this particular queue item? So for that same purpose, what we have to do is if let's say if the particular item, okay, particular item, 
if whatever the item that the robot has picked if tar ob task object dot status status dot to string okay dot this let's take this okay is um equals to completed okay let's assume this if it's completed then only we are going to follow the actual process like what are the next steps of the processes otherwise otherwise what we are going to do we don't want it to miss out on that particular queue item right so for that we can either change the status of the queue or we can create the same queue item okay add queue item or you can just copy from here okay add queue item okay so that one same queue item will be added into the queue with the new status okay so now what i'm going to do here is let's go to okay task or id task object dot id dot to string so from where we will get this task object so here in this we had the task object but here where we will get the task object it should be the same specific item this one we should give okay so for that i'm going to copy this whole task id and put it up over here in the dictionary okay and save so now what happens is okay so 832175 we have picked okay so now we will just look into the task status of the object it still says unassigned right so now what we are going to do we are going to add the queue item so if you see what is the queue item that it was picked up this one second one so if you go inside 832175 correct Eight three two one seven five. So now I am going to enter into this workflow. So it is not equal to completed. That means we still want to add the queue item or change the status of the queue item to the new, so that when the bot reruns again, okay, when the status of it changes to completed, only then we are going to relieve that queue item, right? So add it back. If you see. The same queue item is added into the queue, which is eight three two one seven five. Perfect, right? Now, now one more thing that I wanted to tell. Important thing. So this is one thing how you can retain the queue item so that you don't miss out any details or you don't miss out any transactions, right? So now the task is once after I assign this to myself. Okay, uh, so let's assign to self, and either you approve or reject. Okay, I'll approve this. Let's go to one seven five because this is the one we created, right? Or take one seven six. Okay, assign to self, and then say approve. Okay. Now, let's pick this item and see how do you get that values out of the radio buttons. That is important, right? So, for that, let's run this workflow and see. Okay, now the action has been taken on one two uh, one seven six. So now, let's see what is the status of it after the action is taken on. So let's uh, check task object. So what is the task object? This is the task object, right? So you can see here the J properties approve. 
I have clicked on approve. So the J property of it is approve, right? Very clear. So how do I get this value out of this J property? That is important, right? How do I retrieve that particular value is important, right? So for that, if you see, and also try to check if we have that particular approve any other way. Okay, no, right? So let's try to extract that well, task object dot. Because when we when, when you see, you'll have a lot of uh, functions here. Okay, so it says J property, right? Uh, so let's say if you take action, check what is the output of it. It says submit. That means you have submitted. This is not the uh, output of this one. Correct. This is different. That is different. So this is actually a JSON output. J property means JSON output. So for this to retrieve the value uh, from this particular JSON, how do we, what do we have to exactly do? That is important. So for which we have to deserialize this. Okay. So let's do, go ahead and try to deserialize because if you see. Whenever I'm trying to uh, give something with respect to this or, or mentioning J, whatever is there, like let's say delete, deleted user ID, it's coming up, right? Last modification date, it's coming. But the J property will not come because it is in a D, J, JSON format. So for this, we have to go for this lesson. So for that, what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and here I'll put a deserialized JSON. So, I don't have a property uh, of deserialized JSON, right? So, for that, what package you have to install? If you have seen my API activities, you would have known that. Okay, web API dot activities. You have a dot web API dot activities. Just install that. It will give you the deserialized JSON activities. So it's quite simple uh, if you don't know how to deserialize, it's quite simple. And also there are multiple other ways uh, for different JSON formats. How do we deserialize and all? I can I can also show you that things in the video. There's a specific video uh, for API automation. I can just quickly show you while the package is being installed. So just go to my channel. This is very useful and productive video, I would suggest because API automation is something which is, you know, one step uh, forward and which is very quick. Uh, and on my channel, I have explained right from the scratch the API automation. So this is the video which has only three videos. This playlist has only three videos. <coughs> if you see here, I have explained right from the scratch, like how it works, use of API, types of API, SOAP and just and everything. Only maybe you can just take one hour excuse me one hour of your time and by end of this particular playlist you can understand everything like what is api automation how do you use it how do you, how does it works with completely different formats and examples excuse me so this is how you can learn about api automation just check it out on my channel and next let's go back to the original topic Okay, so we have the deserialized JSON. I spoke about deserialized JSON. <coughs> Excuse me. I spoke about deserialized JSON array also in that video, how, in which format we use that and all of that. So we have the JSON string here. We should provide the JSON string here. So for that, I'm gonna use, um, okay, so first let's provide the whole string the object uh, task object that we get from there. Okay, task object I'm passing. Uh, okay, let me check. Um, task data, okay, to string. Okay, so I'm passing the string value over here and this provides me a JSON object. So from here, I'm gonna take JSON object as output okay from here i'm going to extract so how do we extract i'm going to show in the debug panel 
so the more you learn to utilize the debug panel the immediate panel uh, and the uh, locals panel the more you learn about like how it's processing why we're using certain syntax because it's not it's not uh, you know uh, really mandatory to keep everything in head like or, or how you would do the formatting and all but you just have to know why we are doing certain way so that you can do it even though if it's complex or any of such sort okay so here i'm going to uh, pass our json string right so here first thing is uh, let's see what is the task object whether the status has been changed to completed or not. Where is the status? So as the status is completed, only then it came inside, right? So let's check the status here. Completed, nice. Okay, so there's some error. So let's look into that error. Unexpected character encountered while passing value. Okay, so let me check this out so as i looked into this particular issue there are few changes that have happened uh with respect to the written type or you know the object type of the deserialized json object and all of that so i have done a little bit of background on that so what i can do i can suggest you what all the changes that you can do to not let this error happens because if you take a normal decentralized JSON as it is, uh, that activity as it is and put it, then definitely you will also encounter this issue because if you observe in the properties, the argument that you might have seen here must be an object. It's just a simple object, generic object. So you have to change that to Newton soft dot json dot link dot j object you have to first change this to this. Okay. And one more thing that I wanted to showcase is Whenever I'm taking the task object, um, I'm not going to put it the task object as it is. But for, first of all, I'll just run this main workflow once again so that I'll get some items into the queue and also to my action center so that we can try to, uh, based on the action that we take on the action center, we'll try to process them. Okay. So if I see here in the output, I can see 15, 16, 17. So I'll go to action center and process them first. Okay, 15, 16, 17. Let's approve some, reject some, we'll get the output. Okay. 15, 16, 17. Okay, I'll approve this. We rejected the other one. And then the 16. Okay, assign to self and then reach out. okay nice so we've got all the queue items also created so now let's go into the action path and try to debug this and see so here i'm going to show you two different things so the first thing is you have to change the properties the object type okay newton newton soft dot json dot link dot j object you have to change that and the second thing is oh white Okay, let me, okay, this is 13, okay. Let me debug this again. We did 14, 15, 16, okay. Okay, so we are inside, inside DC realization. But one thing that I wanted to show, maybe I missed it. So the task object, so when we see the task object value in the uh, immediate panel, here uh, before the JSON object starts, right? Before the, we have checked this is a J property, but this J property is inside the data, which is a JSON object, right? So this is inside the data. So what we have to pass inside the deserialized JSON is the data. Okay, so why and what we are, why we are doing all this is because there's a format that we have to follow, okay? So that, uh, if you wanted to understand more clearly, please watch out the video that I recommended, which is API automation. We'll understand very clearly why we're follow for, uh, you know, following this particular format. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass JS task object dot data. So if you see here, I'm going to pass dot data, okay, dot two string. 
clear this is the value that i'm going to pass and let's debug this okay so let's go till the point where we have this one okay so now i'm deserializing this whatever the output that i'm getting here right so here we have done two two uh, tweaks what is the first one the type argument we have changed from object to newtons of dot json dot link dot j object first one and here we have passed j task object dot data so why i have clearly shown you and the output is json object so now i'm taking the output as json object okay so if you see here my json object has these values okay so the first one second one and the third one right so from this what i wanted to extract if you wanted to see the headers just put two string okay just you can see this token so i'm copying this token sop status so if you remember in the part one this sop status is something that i have given inside the field key while creating a form remember so json object of sop status dot to string got it that's it so i'm gonna copy this whole thing okay continue okay so here i'm gonna put a if condition here okay so here i'm gonna put this value json object dot sop dot two string if it equals if it equals approve i'm gonna approve so let's change this to lower to whole lower case <coughs> excuse me excuse me so i'm gonna change this to whole lower case if it equals to approve uh, then i am going to put up a log message saying that your sop is approved sop is approved otherwise i am going to say your sop is rejected else your sop is rejected okay so let's run this and see whether the SOP is approved or rejected. Okay, so let's go to the output panel. Your SOP is rejected. Nice, perfect. So this is how we are going to create this particular um we can retrieve the values from the action center based on the action that's been taken. So I think this is clear for you. If at all uh, you're facing any issue with the decentralized JSON, you have to remember one more point here. Quickly, I'll tell you that uh, if in any case, if you uh, even after changing this type argument or giving in the data and still you are facing some issue, try to initialize this particular object. So JSON object is the output that I am getting from here. So try to initialize it. JSON object. How you can initialize new J object. Try to initialize it and it will work. Okay. So these are the three things that you have to remember. What is it? First thing, change the variable output uh, type argument to JSON uh, JSON of dot. What is the output value here? Dot JSON dot link dot. JSON soft, uh, sorry, Newton soft dot JSON dot link dot J object and take the data. And the third thing is initialize the J object, right? The output of the JSON object. That's it. I think this video is clear for you. Uh, how you can pass the values, how we can retrieve the values from the uh from the action that's been taken on a particular task in the action center so if at all you find this video useful and if you want to know anything specific to action center something of a use case of uh, of something of that sort you can also let me know in the comments i'll try to pull uh, a content on that particular concept that you're facing issue with so 
if you find this video useful do let me know in the comments and also uh, do like the videos and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed it so that will give me a lot of motivation to give to do more videos and also hit the notification bell so you'll get the video as soon as i upload them thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.